Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Glad you could be here. I am so very much enjoying this nice chilly weather here in Arizona. It's perfect book reading weather and I have been reading a lot this last week. I just finished a really great book and I want to share it with you today. That book is The Last Wish by Andre Sipkowski. So I'll get into the book in just a couple of minutes, but first I want to tell you a little bit about how I ended up choosing to read this book. As some of you may know, if you've watched previous videos of mine, I've talked about the Witcher TV series that is coming to Netflix here very soon. It starts on December 20th, actually, and the TV series is based in large part on the books. Um, I've been told that a lot of it is taken from The Last Wish, which is the reason that I picked this book up. Now, some of you may also be familiar with the Witcher video game series. The video game series, to my understanding, takes place after the books leave off. So when the books are all finished, the video game series picks up from there. Uh, that's what I understand anyway. I may be wrong on that. But the TV series will be based in large part on the books themselves. So I am extremely excited to see the show, especially having read the book. So if you're excited for the, for the TV show or if you have some background knowledge of this, having read the books already or played the video games, uh, let me know in the comments if, if I'm mistaken on, on some of that and uh, what you thought. You know, should I, should I play the video games, invest my time in those, that sort of thing. Without further ado, though, let's get right into the book. The book is essentially a book of short stories set within a frame story. If you don't know what a frame story is, it's essentially a setup where the main story of the book takes place in the first chapter and the last chapter of the book. And then the content in between, in the middle, is flashbacks or reminiscences, memoirs, if you will, detailing the different situations that the character's been in, that makes them who and what they are, uh, different events that have happened in their lives that brought them to where they are. So that's really the way that this book is set up. Uh, the first chapter sets up the story where Geralt, the Witcher, has been hired to battle a monster, and his employer is very deeply connected to the monster, and so he's asked that Geralt not kill the monster unless he just absolutely has to. And during the battle, Geralt ends up getting wounded, and uh, after the battle's all over, he ends up waking up in the temple of a very well-known goddess, and the priestess is attending to him and helping him to heal. And it is during this time that he begins to relate the different events that have happened in his life. So you can see it's very much, it, it's almost like he's telling the priestess about all these different things that have happened to him that, that have brought him where he is today. Uh, there are other times where he's not telling the priestess, he's telling someone else, but uh, in most cases it's the priestess and there are different interludes in between where at, in, essentially after each short story where he's reminiscing about the past, you have this interlude where it's back in the present and he's talking with the priestess again or with someone else and relating some additional facts about the story. And then at the end of the interlude, he starts talking a little bit about another event and then 
in the next short story you get details about that event. So uh, the, the formatting is really unique in that respect. I thought it was pretty cool. I do want to talk a little bit about who Geralt is. He is a human who has been mutated via various different trials and tests. And he's been fed a whole bunch of different uh, herbs and concoctions, many of them poisonous, that are designed to change and enhance his body so so that he has the sorcerer-like powers that he needs to combat the different monsters. The witchers are usually selected specifically for their vocation. They are often orphans, so they, they don't have any ties to family or things like that who will miss them, and so they are set aside for this specific task of becoming and carrying out the tasks of a witcher. And Geralt is conducting his business during a time where most of the monsters have been eradicated, and so he goes from village to village basically trying to, get to, trying to find work because there's not a lot of work for witchers anymore. So that, that tells you a little bit about Geralt, and you'll find out more about that in the book, so I don't want to spoil too much of it. But it was very, very unique and different feeling. A lot of the short stories in here are reminiscent of classic fairy tales. So if you've, uh, if you've read or seen Beauty and the Beast or... Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, or things like that, you will, you will see very strong allusions to those stories in this book, but they are completely written in a different way. So, so while you may think, oh, a retelling of a fairy tale is kind of boring, it's not, trust me, it's, it's very uniquely done. This book is very, very heavy on dialogue. That was one tiny downside for me. I really like character development, but not too much character development. And this book is about 85% dialogue and conversation and storytelling and about 15% action. So while it's not a deterrent for me, it wasn't necessarily my preference. And so depending on what your thoughts are about that and what, what you like in a story, you may or may not really get into the book. I know some people really don't like it. Other people love it. There's people in between. I'm kind of one of those in-between folks. I didn't love it extremely, but it was a really fun read. And I think it's a great introduction to Geralt as a character, and that's really what it was designed to do. I've heard that future books in the series are more action-packed, more story-driven, not so much character-driven. This was really designed to introduce characters. Not only The Witcher, but uh, Geralt also has a traveling companion from time to time named Dandelion. He is a bard. He creates, uh, or a troubadour, he creates songs and and sings them in various locations, and that's how he makes his living. And, of course, his songs are based on different events and stories that he's heard. So Geralt is the perfect muse for his creative endeavors. So Dandelion shows up in this book a little bit. We also get a glimpse into his first interaction with Yennefer, who is a sorceress for hire and she shows up in the very last story of this book if you are familiar with the witcher video games my understanding is though i have not played the video games that yennefer is a key character in some of the video games and of course she will feature prominently in the tv show as well so i'm really looking forward to that 
it was really cool to see how he first meets Yennefer and especially how their fates become interwoven together so that he is inextricably and for all time it would seem tied to Yennefer and to her fate. So really, really enjoyable. I love the way the characters were introduced. Uh, the priestess of the temple that Geralt is recovering at is quite a unique and powerful woman uh, named Nanaki. I think that's how her name is pronounced. I'm, I'm not entirely sure that's how I pronounced it. But uh, she is a really awesome character that I really hope to encounter in future books. I don't know if she's going to be in the TV show or if she's in the video games, but it was really cool to read the small portions of the book that included her. So I, I highly recommend this. Sipkowski has a very unique way of using classic fantasy tropes, but not in a way that they feel like the same old fantasy tropes. They feel unique, quite different. Uh, there's a whole wide variety of creatures that pop up in this book that are uh, vampire-like and, and things like that. Uh, there's gins in the story, which was really cool as well, but they're done in a completely different way and in a way that not only speaks to the fairy tales that we kind of all grew up with, but it's very much wrapped up in the original myths that those fairy tales were based on as well. So you, you get glimpses of your classic favorite fairy tales, but in a completely different way. So I highly recommend this book. I would give it four stars. So I didn't love it extremely, but I also didn't not love it. it I, I'm just kind of in between. It was a really, really good book. I would read it again. And I will definitely read the other books in the series at some point. But I give it four stars because it hasn't really told me enough to really get into the world yet. I'm sure that will change. Let's discuss in the comments what, what you think. Are, have you read this book? Have you read the book series? Am I in for a treat going forward? I'm, I've heard I am. Have you played the video games? Should I play the video games? Is it worth my time to get into it? Or are they so completely different from the books that it doesn't really matter either way? I'm really, really curious to hear your thoughts on it. Have you never encountered either? And are you interested now? Let me know in the comments too. I'd really love to discuss it with you. And now that that is all completed, I want to remind you to make sure and subscribe to my channel and sign up for notifications. Click the like if you enjoyed this video so that uh, that my video gets ranked and shows to more people. Make sure to share this video with your friends too so that they can see this video, but not only this video, my future content as well. And most importantly, as I always say, make sure that you are reading more books. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.